What's up, everybody? I'm Simon Sabro, and today I got for y'all a manga review of No Longer Human by Usamaru Furia. So, before we get into it, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Simon Sabro YT. Link will always be down in the description. Also, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an upload, all that good stuff. Also, be sure to comment down if you've read this version of No Longer Human, the Junji Ito one, the original one by Osamu Dazai, or any other variation of it. I don't know if there is any, but if you've read it, definitely comment down how you feel about it. Let me know. Or if you plan on picking it up, maybe plan on checking out one of the versions, definitely comment that down. Let me know. But with all that out the way, let's just jump right into it. So to start out with one, this is going to contain spoilers for both No Longer Human, like I said, the Usamaru Furia version, as well as the Junji Ito version. So definitely keep that in mind if you do plan on reading them. I'm going to try and keep the spoilers really light until maybe towards the end of the video, I'll go a little bit more in depth. Also, another thing to keep in mind, I have not read the original one by Osamu Dazai. So I might say something that might not be too accurate. I don't know, but don't hold it against me too much. But with all that out the way, let's honestly just start off. So for one, I have read the Junji Ito version and it is one of, I think it's like easily in my top 10, maybe even top five, depending on the day, but it definitely is easily in there. And it's one of, if not my favorite work by Junji Ito. So when I saw this one, I was honestly really excited, especially when uh, Kodansha announced that they would be redoing it because it was out of print. It was uh, three volumes, which were all out of print. I think for all three of them, it costed like $250 plus. Um, but I am really glad that they made this one. And honestly, the spine isn't like, it's really easy to read despite the size of the book. And honestly, I'm really thankful for it. It is amazing for one. I have read through it. And it was amazing. And I'm stuck between whether I like this or the Junji Ito one more because they are very different. And I feel like even if you read the Junji Ito one, still give this one a shot because they're not the same at all. They do have certain parallels here and there, but the story itself is fairly different. So this one follows the story of Yobo Ozo or Yoba Ozo, I forget, but <laughs> basically they both follow the same character, of course. And in this one, instead, it follows a little bit of uh, Furuya kind of looking for what manga they want to make next and kind of gives you a bit of insight on how they kind of picked up this series and decided to, you know, kind of go about with it. And here's some color pages. This is, I believe, the volume one cover. I think this is the volume two cover. And this next color page, I believe, is the volume three cover. I could be wrong with those, but I believe that's the case. And for one just to start out the art in here is beautiful it is it fits the story so well and not saying ito's art doesn't fit it because i think ito's art also fits it really really well especially the way they use kind of horror to depict um yobo's state of mind at the time as well as just their surroundings it's really good especially in the imagery but like i said to start out with it does follow a little bit of uh furuya here kind of following uh yozo's life and trying to make a story out of it because they're following like a little blog post online and using it as material for the next manga idea and so um i think the pictures are here you could kind of see it but basically uh Furia is trying to figure out how did Obo go from this <laughs> to this and this is him at, I believe like 25 years old so trying to figure out what happened in between that and this is mainly where it differs between this version and the Junji Ito version because with the Ito version it follows um Yozo's life starting from childhood up until like teenage years and then older and it, it kind of just goes through his biography like that kind of like i said just chronologically of his age whereas this one by furuya mostly follows on those teenage years and a little bit up there in age but mostly the teenage years and it'll kind of hint back towards his younger days here and there but for one i found that really interesting because you get like i said it's two different stories about the exact same character but just the way they went about it was just so different and it kind of gives you a new light on the story 
compared to just reading the same story twice, you know? And with the Ito version, it puts a lot more emphasis on how kind of Yozo's past holds him back from moving forward because like I said, it kind of just goes through his whole life. Whereas the Furia version kind of puts a little bit more emphasis on how his own kind of bad decisions hold him from going forward because in both of them, he is a people pleaser, but it doesn't stem from childhood trauma so much as kind of his own just poor decision making. And like I said, the art, just scrolling through it, the art is really, really good. And as well as, like I said, the imagery is amazing for both stories. And that's truthfully what captivated me for both of them. And I'm unfamiliar with uh, Furuya's art or really anything by them apart from this. This is literally all I know about them. But after this, I was like, dang, uh, I might do a little bit of research to see, you know, what else they make. But here's just a little bit of art real quick. And like I said, it's so clean. Something about it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Takeshi Obata, the artist for Death Note. Now we start to get a little bit into spoiler territory, just a little bit. But the beginning of the book kind of focuses on Yozo in this kind of cult group. Um, I don't think the group ever had a specific name, but he's in this cult group and he kind of rises up the ranks of it. And for one, just to give a little bit of light on it. So he lives by himself in, I believe a high rise building that his father pays for. And his father is very rich. And I think is a CEO of a company, something like that. And so he's kind of just living off his father's money. He doesn't really have to do much apart from just go to school and get good grades and his father will keep on supporting him. That's about it. But his relationship with his father is pretty shaky. I don't think it ever mentions his mother at all. But it does mention his brother here and there, but it's not really important to the story. But basically, he's in this group, like I said, and the group gets really, really crazy down the line. And basically, they want to blow up his father's company, not because it's his father, but it just kind of coincidentally happens out that way. But along the line of it, you'll notice that uh, Yozo gets addicted to smoking, drinking, and women. But basically what happens is uh, Yozo starts like ditching school and stuff like that and his father stops supporting him. So now he's homeless and he doesn't really have the motivation or the drive to actually get a job because for one, he's been sheltered most of his life, you know, getting money from his father and as well as the fact that he doesn't really hold on to his money that well like he just spends money spends money spends money and that was another reason his father stopped supporting him because he saw that he was just spending money on foolish things really just like i said women cigarettes and uh alcohol but it's very interesting to see because the supporting characters for it are actually not as bad as you'd think like um, there's one character, I forget his name, but it's basically like his best friend. Um, and he tells them all the time, like, hey, what you're doing is wrong. I don't really agree with it, but do do you basically. And Yozo knows that it's wrong, but still continues to do it. And he feels like he kind of cornered himself in a way where it's not like he wants to do it, but he has to do it. And to a certain point, and I think I said this when I talked about the Jinji Ito one in some video before, but one thing that I really love about just No Longer Human in general, I assume it's kind of in all three of them, is the fact that Yozo is not a good person at all. And I think that's what makes him an amazing character. You know, similar to like how Guts or Kaneki or Light aren't really good humans, but because of that, it makes them more human, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Hopefully you understand what I'm trying to say. But I think it makes Yozo an amazing character and can be very relatable, not 100% of the way, but I definitely in some parts, he's a very relatable character. And I think everyone can relate to him in one way or another, or at least learn something from this character. And I think that's honestly his best trait especially like towards this isn't even the middle of the book this is still like the first volume but he starts to kind of just manipulate women 
not saying this is the relatable part, <laughs> but he starts to just manipulate women in order to, for him to have some place to go home to, something to eat, uh, money, etc., etc., and just treat people very poorly in order to get what he wants. And I know I keep saying it, but it's very interesting just the type of person he is because I don't even know how to describe it, <laughs> honestly. Hopefully you understand what I mean. If you've read the Genji Ito or the original, then you probably know what I'm trying to say. If you've read this one, then you definitely know what I'm trying to say. But it is so fascinating, the type of story that this is. And I, I think I said this at the beginning of the video and I'm probably repeating myself a lot, but I think everybody should read this book or at least the Jinji Ito version, or at least the, you know, regular one by Osamu Daza. And I do plan on reading that sometime soon, whenever I get my hands on it. Another thing that like, okay, my favorite part of this book starts to happen towards the middle, kind of going to the end. So probably around like volume two or three, I think. And it's when he meets this one woman and she has a daughter and he just lives with her and he doesn't have a job, but he becomes a manga artist and starts to kind of create a child manga. I don't know what the proper term is. I don't think it was a gag manga, but like a manga kid towards kids. So kind of like Doraemon or something like that. In this, he kind of like, he doesn't love the woman that he's with at all, but she loves him. And so she's willing to take care of him and help him out in any way that she can. But what gets interesting from here so throughout the story his mental state has just been declining 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 um but certain pages like this one that i really wanted to point out really show what his state of mind is at the time there's a couple of other pages i don't want to show all of them because i feel like they add a lot more to the story than just the story if that makes sense but what happens is that I can't show these pages because of uh, explicit content. This book does come wrapped in plastic, by the way. You'll start to see that he begins to then mistreat the uh, woman that's taking care of him until he eventually runs off and starts to live at this bar with this old lady, uh, the one who kind of manages the bar. And from here, the story just kicks off, honestly. And a lot of parts of the story are extremely unpredictable. And there were so many times where I was like, what's gonna happen next like even though i read the jinji ito one there was so many parts where i was like okay i know this is gonna happen but how is the author gonna make it different you know and i don't know which version like actually came first i really don't know i just know i read the jinji ito one first and that's all i can go off of but here's where it, like oh it gets so good and like i said this is towards the end so this is definitely like super spoiler territory but what happens is that he then meets this one woman, um, very young. I think she was 18, 16, something like that. But she, ba he basically elopes with her. He runs away, gets married with her and he's living the best life possible. And at this point, despite how bad of a human he is, I was rooting for him. I was like, all right, you know, he's happy. I'm glad to see it. You know, I feel like everybody deserves a certain level of happiness whether you know you've done something wrong or not whatever but it was happy to see him or i was happy to see him being happy and i knew that it was going down south somehow i didn't remember because i read the jinji ito one like years ago but i knew it wasn't gonna stay perfect and so when it happened it just clicked and i was like dang you know but it was just so interesting. I'm not gonna talk about what happened because for one, I can't, uh, YouTube reasons, but also the shock of it is just, it's gonna hit different, man. It's gonna hit different. But this is the um, wife that I was referring to and he continues making manga and just, like I said, his life starts to go so well until a certain incident happens and I'm not gonna say it, but I do wanna touch on the ending a bit. I don't remember how the Genji Ito one ended. Actually, I kind of do remember. So now super mega spoilers now, but the Genji Ito one, I believe ended in a really weird way where I think um, Yozo Oba met Osamu Dazai in a prison or something like that. I don't remember if that's exactly how it went or not, but I know the way this one ended where Yozo, was just delusional to a very absurd level and 
basically ran off and went missing. So what happens is that Furio tries to find out what's the ending to the story because he became really intrigued with it just from reading the blog. And so Furio kind of goes to the, the town that Yozo was in and starts talking with the people that were in the story, such as his best friend, the lady at the bar, etc., etc., and kind of tries to figure out what kind of person Yozo really was. And so what happens is that he starts to, he sees Yozo at the end of it, and it is really, really interesting. Like I said, very overall amazing story. Just from beginning to end, I literally could not put the book down. Like I just didn't want to. It was just amazing from start to finish. And honestly, I would definitely recommend it. This might, like I said, between these two, one of them are making my top 10. I don't feel comfortable putting both of them. I don't feel like that's fair, but they're both amazing stories in their own right. And I would definitely recommend both of them if, if you feel comfortable to read it, because I feel like these stories aren't for everybody. Um, but if you can enjoy it, you definitely will enjoy it. And another thing that I forgot to mention is that this book is backwards compared to other manga. Um, I don't know how important that is to anybody, but that is a thing. But that's really it for the video. Just as an overall thing, I really did enjoy this manga. And like I said, I think almost anybody can enjoy this manga. But yeah, that's all I had to say about it. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, be sure to comment down how you feel about No Longer Human, whichever version of it you read, or if you plan on reading it, whatever that might be. But like I said, thank you all so much for watching and getting to this part of the video. But that's all for me. This is Simon Sabro signing out. I'll catch you on the next one.